Minecraft is a game that has had many different versions released over the years. Minecraft Java Edition could be considered one of the best in terms of the amount of content it has to offer. Bedrock Edition could be considered the best in terms of its online play and accessibility. And then finally, Minecraft Console Edition is in my opinion, probably the most goaded version that has ever been released for the game. But sadly, all good things must get blasted. So in this video, I'm gonna be explaining why I think this version was one of the greatest, as well as what happened to the game and the events leading to its ultimate downfall. The Console Legacy version was first released back in 2012 exclusively on the xbox 360 before this the game had only been released on pc known as minecraft java edition notch was the creator of minecraft wanted to release the game on the xbox 360 so that way the game could reach a wider audience of people the problem was that notch coded the game in java but this was unusual and made it difficult to port the game over to the console versions notch needed another studio to help him rewrite the game in c sharp so that way the game could be played on consoles and that's where 4j studios clutched up 4j is an independent group of developers based in scotland who you might might remember if you ever played this version of Minecraft. After a while of making the game, Minecraft finally released onto the Xbox 360 and within 24 hours it already broke all previous Xbox Live Arcade sales records. Now at the time the release of Minecraft on consoles was a huge deal for a lot of people. This made Minecraft more accessible to a casual audience because not everyone was lucky enough to have a computer that could run the game. So now millions of people were finally able to play the game. In addition to this, the game allowed online multiplayer up to 8 people and split screen co-op up to 4 people. This meant that you didn't have to play the game alone and you didn't need a multiplayer server to play with others. Now as long as you had an Xbox and a couple of controllers or Xbox Live, you could easily play with your friends now. The game's release was equivalent to Java Edition Beta 1.6 which meant the game was very simplistic. This was the time where textures were prehistoric, there was no hunger bar, eating gave you health, and overall the game was very basic but you still had everything that you needed to be creative with. Over time the game would keep getting updates and even though they were a little bit behind Java Edition, they would still slowly but surely come. Eventually in 2013, the PlayStation 3 version would also drop. Now back then I would watch a lot of YouTubers play the Xbox 360 version but I actually was a little different and I had a PlayStation 3 at the time. So this is when I started to play for myself and I was addicted. Every time I was at school doing 5 plus 5 I would just be sitting there fiending for some Minecraft and I would play any chance I got. Before that I was already playing Java Edition on my dad's computer but something about the console edition just made me stick to it more often. I think it had something to do with the comfort of being able to play wherever I want and now I could finally load up my Minecraft world so I could play with my friends which I wasn't able Able to do before with the java edition there was actually a lot of huge differences that separated this version from the rest starting out we got tutorial world now i know this is nostalgic for a lot of y'all because if y'all don't remember basically when you booted up the game you had the option to play whatever tutorial world was available at the time in all of them you would spawn inside of the small area where it would teach you the very basics of the game's controls basic features and even building your first house but once you finish you could go out into the rest of the map and there would be tons of cool stuff that you can learn about they would teach you about more advanced stuff like nether portals trading farming, redstone, brewing, and also stuff from whatever new update was around during the time. New tutorial worlds would drop with the major updates, and all of them had a lot of cool stuff and easter eggs, and as well as some quests where you had to like find every music disc scattered around the map, which is pretty cool. But yeah, the tutorial worlds were one of the most iconic features of the game. I honestly have no idea why they aren't in any other version, because they teach a lot of new players how to play the game, they're also just a lot of fun to explore. One of the things that Minecraft is known for are infinite worlds, but with the Minecraft console version, you were limited to just a certain amount of space. Back on the Xbox 360 in the PS3, you were limited to just 864 by 864 block worlds. When the PS4 and the Xbox One versions released though, the large world setting allowed you to create worlds up to 5,120 by 5,120 block worlds, which was way larger. The limits were obviously due to hardware limitations at the time, and while it did kind of suck that you couldn't explore forever in one world, I don't think it was all bad because the bigger isn't always better. The limited sizes made each world that you created a new and unique experience. What you could find in one world, you might not be able to find find in the next, but they were still balanced to where you could have everything that you needed in the world. On top of that, if you ran out of stuff in the end or the nether, you had the option to reset them so that way you didn't run out of important stuff you might need from them. So yeah, while limited worlds were a downside, in some ways I do think that it kind of made the game more fun. Crafting was also way different in the console versions of Minecraft. Instead of the classic 3x3 crafting grid, you had an organized menu that just let you scroll through and craft. I think there's one downside, and that's that having this easy to use menu kind of takes away from the purpose of crafting recipes that you had to discover. I think the main reason they did this though so that way it was easier for controller players otherwise it would be a lot more difficult than it was with the mouse and keyboard they actually did update it later on where you could choose between the new and the old classic version of crafting so it's kind of a win-win for everyone while it is kind of a point of minecraft to memorize your crafting recipes at some point when you learn everything you kind of just want it to be more convenient but that's debatable i guess console edition also had its own dlc which included skin packs texture packs and entire worlds that you could play the skin packs each had several skins that you could choose from and you would get everything in the pack for usually just a 
few bucks. The downside about skins is that you couldn't use your own custom ones since it was on a console. But there were also a lot of free skins that you could choose from. And some of the skins were actually fire. They also made it easy to switch between skins in an instant, which is still something that you can't do in the Java version of the game. And also, I just like to throw this in, but they had this black dude skin who had chains and shit on, and they called him Athletic Steve. Now, I don't know how the f they got away with that, but yeah, I thought that was kind of interesting. In addition to the skin packs, you also had texture packs that would change the way that the game looked, and they also would cost a few bucks usually. And then lastly, you would get these things called mashup packs, which were entire worlds that you could explore, each with their own textures, music, and skin packs, and you could get all that for just about $6 each. There were a lot of really cool collabs too that they did, like Mass Effect, Adventure Time, Mario, Little Big Planet, and even Halo, which were kind of wild, especially at that time. Overall, though, it was just a good time where you can get all that stuff for pretty cheap. There are also many smaller features that were kind of cool, like leaderboards, spawning in with an empty map, the option to show a bonus chest, a solid amount of world options, and also a really cool super flat creator, which was low-key better than any other version, and could let you make some pretty cool worlds and challenges. And there were also a lot of minor things that made the game unique. One thing I'd like to mention is the game's YouTube community. There were a handful of console edition exclusive YouTubers like Echo Soldier, Big B Stats, IBX Toy Cat, Xbox Addictions, Lion Maker, Wait a second. And Stampy Longhead, who has got tens of millions of views on several of his videos, which just shows how big the console edition community was. Now, while there were several different features of the game that were really cool and made the game special, I feel like it would be unfair to not mention the downsides of the game. So now we're going to have to flame that bitch. So first of all, the delay of updates were kind of annoying. It could take months for a feature that released on Java Edition to finally release onto the consoles. And there were actually a lot of features that just weren't in the game at all, like command blocks, barrier blocks, which were actually accessible with mods but not even in the base game, hardcore mode, commands, spectator mode, realms, mods, and most importantly, servers. Now the lack of servers were probably the biggest downside of the game for a couple reasons. One being because you were stuck only being able to play between survival and creative mode, and you didn't have access to a lot of cool games and other other fully fleshed out modes that could only be played with Java Edition servers. It also kind of sucked that if you had a world you wanted to play with multiple people in, the host had to be on at all times, otherwise others wouldn't have been able to join the world, which could have been fixed if the game had just had servers or even just realms. And then finally, the fact that you weren't able to experience being around more than 8 players at a time made the multiplayer side of things kind of feel sad and kind of lonely, especially if you had no one to play with. However, the developers decided to cook something up that would change the game forever, and this was the mini games mode. This mode Mode consisted of three mini games. The first was called Battle, which was basically a smaller version of the popular Hunger game. You would load into a small map with up to 16 players surrounding some chests in the middle. When the game started, everyone would rush in the middle trying to get whatever loot they could in the first 15 seconds before the grace period ended. After that, everyone was able to fight and loot chests around the map, and the goal was to be the last person standing. There were several maps that you could choose from, and this was probably one of the most popular modes. Next up was Tumble, which was the game's version of Spleef. Basically, you spawn on this top layer, and you have to try to knock everyone down with either the shovels or the snowballs until they eventually fall in lava. This game was a lot more simple, but I definitely had a good time with it. The last and final one was called Glide. Now this one was a racing styled mode where you had to use the elytras to go through hoops and reach the end before everyone else. There were also a lot of maps for this mode, but overall this was relatively simple again. While the minigames weren't technically the same as how Java servers were, these minigames were the first big step to bringing console edition players to a bigger multiplayer experience. If you were sad because you had no friends, well there you go. Now you had minigames and you didn't even need friend. This was the peak of Minecraft console edition, but it all went downhill from here. In 2017, a new version of Minecraft would officially be released known as Minecraft Bedrock Edition. This was a version of Minecraft that was purposed to be able to work on all platforms like mobile, console, and PC, and would release with a better together update that let users across several platforms be able to play together. For console versions, it would actually only be released on Xbox at the time, until it was finally released on the PlayStation in 2019. At the time, the update in the new Bedrock Edition edition sounded amazing. The game would finally introduce servers, we would get a lot of content that was missing from the game, we were now finally able to play cross-platform with people no matter what device they own, and you could even transfer worlds from the console edition to the bedrock edition. Now this sounded great, but this actually kind of sucked ass and a lot of players hated it. The bedrock edition is actually the same version of the old Minecraft Pocket Edition, just updated. This means that on console and PC, you're basically playing a mobile game that's blown up to the size of your screen, and this caused some issues. On the consoles, the game was now littered with bugs, glitches, 
and performance issues. There was even this thing called a pink glitch that continued to happen where the game would literally start slowly turning pink. Now this is kind of weird because in some ways the game did perform better in frame rate and other stuff, but the game still would not run smoothly and it would crash a lot. On top of that, they also added the marketplace where you had to buy mine coins to buy community made stuff from the game and it kind of sucked. While yeah, you did have to buy stuff in the older console edition, you actually did get your money's worth with a lot of high quality content and you didn't have to purchase fake in-game currency beforehand. On top of that, it's also apparently very unmoderated and a lot of the stuff on there was stolen from other creators while they're making a profit off of their work. Overall though, the game just seemed like a watered down version of Minecraft and a lot of people didn't like it, especially when it came out. Luckily though, if you didn't like it, you had the option to switch back to the original legacy console version of Minecraft, at least for a little bit. On May 3rd, 2018, Mojang announced that they would release their final major update for the Minecraft console edition, which was actually the aquatic update. This update brought new world generation, blocks, the trident, dolphins, phantoms, turtles, and a bunch of other stuff, as well as the final ever tutorial world. It actually was released on the Xbox 360, but not even the new Xbox One. This was because since Bedrock Edition had already had the aquatic update, there was no reason for them to release it on the Legacy Edition for Xbox. PlayStation 4 at the time hadn't gotten the Bedrock Edition yet, so that's why they still decided to push it out on there. The PS4 version actually received some updates after and even got some features from the Village Pillage update, but it wasn't for long, because soon after, all new content would come to an end on June 3rd, 2019, with the final major update ever seen in Minecraft Console Legacy Edition. Nowadays, if you buy a newer copy of the game, the only way to access it is if you had already purchased it previously, and a lot of people would be upset at this forceful change of versions. Now, you might be wondering, what happened to the game and its developers? Or what would have happened if the game didn't get discontinued? Well, not much is known, but the last major thing might have been a new minigame called Build Battle, which was based on a popular mode in many servers. This is where you're given a prompt and have to build the best version of it out of everyone else in a short amount of time. The reason people think this was is because it was teased towards the end of a Minecon livestream event where the minigames were played with several different console edition YouTubers. Wouldn't it be really cool if you added some sort of like building minigame into the console versions? A building time in the console version. Now that is a good idea. Who knows? Maybe we'll have a rematch if there is a next Minecon at the next Minecon. Nine months ago, 4J Studios had released a trailer on their YouTube channel titled It's Here 2023. Now this video recreated a version of Minecraft's original console edition trailer from all those years ago and it seemed to be teasing a secret game that some people thought would be the return of Minecraft console edition. This game was actually Manic Mechanics which looks to be Alright, but wait, all hope is not given up, because shortly after, it was revealed by a former Minecraft console edition YouTuber, IBXToyCat, in a YouTube video that he had posted, that him and Stampede Longhead, one of the biggest Minecraft console edition YouTubers ever, went to go visit a secret project that 4J Studios had been working on. He mentioned that under NDA, he could not directly disclose what this project was, but he would try his best to talk about it using the public info that was already given. And here's a clip of some of the things he said. Here's the fun thing, I agreed to a NDA, non-disclosure agreement, which means I I can't legally talk about this thing. What I can just say are things that are public facts, right? When they have these similarities to Minecraft, that's incredibly interesting. And also, we can speculate if a Minecraft YouTuber is incredibly excited, then that's a good sign, right? Uh, you could make some assumptions from that. I don't know what they'd be. No, yeah, I don't know about y'all, but this sounds like something big that could be coming from them. Now, we don't know if it's the return of Minecraft console edition or an entirely new Minecraft type of game or something similar, but we do know that it's something relevant to Minecraft console edition and it's probably coming soon. Nowadays on the Minecraft console edition, there's actually an entire small community of people who specifically go back to this version of the game. I've seen several creators who post about it on YouTube and even people who post about it on TikTok. Not long ago, I actually went into a battle minigame on my PlayStation 4 and I was actually able to load into a full lobby pretty fast. I think it's pretty cool that there's still a community of people who are trying to keep this game alive after all these years later. Whenever the Bedrock versions dropped and the Legacy versions got discontinued, me and many other players were upset about it, but I honestly think it's what needed to happen. While yeah, the Bedrock version does kind of seem like a watered down port of Minecraft filled with a bunch of ass without it, Minecraft probably wouldn't be able to succeed to the point it's at today, especially within the modern gaming space. If it wasn't for the Bedrock version, we wouldn't have been able to get cross-platform, which is in my opinion, probably the greatest thing that ever happened to Minecraft. Nowadays, me and a lot of my friends are able to play together after all these years without even owning the same console. Overall though, Minecraft Console Legacy Edition was a really solid version of Minecraft and is one of me and many people's favorite versions of the game. Even though it lacked a lot of features, it also had many of its own, and in some aspects of the game, it even exceeded other versions in my opinion. On top of that, the game just felt like it was polished and like it was built for the consoles. But yeah, let me know what y'all think is the best version of Minecraft, and let me know why in the comments. I think that all of them shine in their own different way, but I'd like to hear y'all's perspective on it. But yeah, if y'all are trying to hear me talk about games and whatever is going on, feel free to drop a like and sub, and uh, yeah, peace.